the speed up to kind of avoid that, even though in general, he is known as an immobile AD carry. There's a lot of options for Gumi here. He's slipping through the AD carries. And AP Kaisa has been pretty nerfed significantly, hmm. but I could see, uh, considering how <laughs> this game is looking like it might go, it'd be something he would do for fun in a situation like this. But considering the composition, <laughs> I'm hoping it's 80 uh, because there's a lot of magic damage in this comp between the Gwyn and the LeBlanc already. Uh, okay. <laughs> We're running it back, the pike in the bottom lane. There it is. Yeah, we are. Yep. I was wondering, you know, I, I didn't think it was going to be the Zoe support or the LeBlanc support or something like that. Um, so yeah, he's just going to go back to the Pike and look to make more plays. Karia loves the Pike. And uh, now we do get the counter pick, essentially, in the bottom side. straight has got a big smile on his face. Yeah, I think it's. I think the set is a pretty good option here. Obviously, set has the ability to react. They actually okay. end up going for Renata instead here in this composition. It's, it's tough to pull this off, but when you have the big explosive damage for the Lee Sin, the Ari, you might be able to actually get the bailout to go off on your AD carry or even Lee Sin in these situations, especially if the game goes late. He's got something like a GA. It becomes very difficult to kill him in team fights. But, man, on the side of T1, we have Karia's Pike, which can threaten each and every one of these champions. Even the Lee Sin is not going to feel safe if he gets hooked in. And the extra gold that can get funneled in because of Pike's passive into this composition, Gwen gets her items a little bit faster potentially if she ends up helping win some of those mid-game team fights around Heralds. It it could be a very one-sided game here for T1 if they find that success. Faker loves playing the I'm 7,000 gold ahead at 15. I'm playing LeBlanc. You have no <laughs> vision, and yeah. I am just everywhere. The flashy champion for him, one of his most famous career-wise. And this is how T1 want to take their fifth game in a row. Well, we'll see if it happens or if we do get the big upset here as everybody on the side of T1, they look extremely relaxed, like they're having a good amount of fun. I hope only that Team Ace is feeling the same. You know, that's what I would love to have come into this one. Nice little game. It's not going to matter too much for the standings, but who knows? Maybe you pick up a win if you just play relaxed and you play your game. So. Really looking forward to this one and seeing what Team Ace have in store for T1 this time. Yeah, I I hope that we see a lot of aggression in the early game here. I do like the potential that Set has into Pike in those early levels because he's just simply so tanky in terms of his stats and how the 2v2 can play out against Kaisa, you know, who also at that point won't have her abilities evolved. Korean crowd, T1's playing it uh, in front of, of course, as well. Uh, they have that extra buff, and okay. Dimitri did not buy any items. Um, <laughs> he had a big smile on his face. I, I suppose that's because he sheepishly uh, realized that he forgot to buy items. Everybody's had that, that game where it's taken a long time to load in, you're alt-tabbed, and then you're like, finally, you just run, <laughs> you just run towards where your starting <laughs> position is, and you're like, ooh, I'm going to have to back real quick. Mm -hmm. Faker's just waiting in the mid lane for the emote battle. We'll see if it happens. Maybe you can use the scare prize emote. <laughs> Could happen. <laughs> Could happen. I am uh, I'm most fallen. curious. If I look at all these matches, I'm most curious about how Zeus versus Lonely goes. Because I think Zeus has so quietly been one of T1's best players this event, but the focus has always been on the more wacky picks we're seeing for carry out on the bottom side. Faker fl being flashy. We saw his Zoe earlier, his LeBlanc. But he's just been very quietly dominant in lane, even though all T1's games have been so one-sided, you're never really looking there because it hasn't been top focus. But how he does in this matchup into the Gangplank is something that's really interesting for me to zoom in on. Yeah, I mean, especially with the last game that we did see, uh, Evi and Steel were actually able to make his laning phase not free, <laughs> which is a lot of what we have seen. Zeus is kind of getting a, a buy, essentially a walkover, and uh, obviously a guy with his skill, he's able to make a lot of it. So um, I was glad to see them actually prepare something and focus for that lane, as Alone actually takes a very nice treat here uh, with that Fox Fire to get the Electrocute procs here onto Faker, something that Faker also often does with the Ari. Yeah, it's his playstyle just goes Fox Fire first every time, looks to proc it as soon as possible, basically on cooldown. We'll lose his passive, uh, the clone. Not going to be too impactful in a lane like this. As with the pots, he is already back up at full, shoving this lave in 
Dimitri at level three could look to make a play here, but I think Faker is very aware of it, knows his position here with the minions. He's just making sure that he is on the left side. Now, Faker doesn't have his passive. Um, <laughs> that is the one thing that he did not have, but distortion available. Generally, when you go for a gank like that, you got to wait for the LeBlanc to be aggressive with the distortion so that he hops back or he doesn't hop back either way. He doesn't use it for escaping. And you could tell based on the way Faker was moving in that lane there and kind of how he was teasing the idea <laughs> of a gank coming, he was absolutely aware. He instantly distorts to avoid the sonic wave coming through. And his positioning in the minions means that alone cannot actually charm him. There's just simply no way for him to close that gap and find it. So, Dimitri, in terms of his pathing, he has done the en entire bottom side of the map and the Raptors. So, he has four camps, but note that he skipped the red buff, is going immediately to the top lane. The Q is going to miss, and Lonely eats two turret shots. So, now, trying to trade it back. It will be first blood, though, as they do identify that that is a very nice time to go for the gank. Dimitri here looking to fight. Now 2v1, owner does have the double buff, and he is looking to try to get this one down, but now Lonely is able to frontline, and he's going to take another kill, and all of a sudden, Team Ace, they're up 2-0. Two, two kills in this early game. You see Alone on camera there is feeling pretty hyped. His teammates make the 2v1 happen. The gank is successful on the top side of the map. You fall behind a little bit in terms of the jungle clear, but you're able to make this gank happen. Early sheen for Gangplank is always a nightmare for melee champions to play into. So this is going to be so frustrating. Uh -oh. Faker alone's in some trouble here. The tower, or rather the chain is going to be enough and Faker burns down, but it is not enough to kill him. As with the Ignite, he's able to take down alone in the 1v1. So another kill going over to T1. Karia, not want to be playing that one too aggressively at this early stage. Is this real? <laughs> is this is real life? There's not actually um, a setup here. Like, there's not. Yeah. There's not actually an angle faker. Like, there's no reason. <laughs> yeah. So we have the flash here, and they're actually still going for this one on the bottom side. As Five Kid is going to be taken out, as a nice little setup there to take him down. As now we're going to have even more fighting up in the top side. Zeus getting very aggressive, but Dimitri now he's got a good angle, and Zeus with no flash here, he is in a lot of trouble. Yeah, he's going to get sound wave or sonic waved. Yeah, perfectly done there. Able to hop over the ward, ward after the sonic wave. It is perfect. Ward hop, slow, and it's guaranteed kill here. So it's two deaths now for Zeus in this laning phase. And this is, for me, the lane I wanted to focus on. How is this going to go? Is he going to end up being able to play this one out into the gangplank? Will he be successful? Will he dominate Lonely again? We don't often zoom in on it. But it's Dimitri who's actually shaped this lane into Lonely's favor. 1-0 and 2 now on the Gangplank, had the early Sheen, is going to back by again here. And these advantages are going to start to stack up over a Gwen, who likes to often control the mid to late game with those item spikes, but they're now so significantly slowed. Yeah, and Faker's continuing with his dominance. Of course, we did have that little bit of a wonky thing, but it, it actually made a, a lot of sense. He was trying to push in the wave and also execute himself. Uh, but that's neither near here nor there because He's still making plays here in the mid lane. Alone is going to have to go to the spirit rushes now. We do have owner around as well. That is going to be the kill handed over to Karia. As you see, Alone is trying to trade it back, but still just the one kill and the roaming begins for this pipe. Yeah, and this is when things can start to get really, really frustrating to play against. Last time when Karia played the pike into DFM, they had such an early dominant lead that he didn't necessarily need to go Umbro Glaive. Still a strong possibility in this game where you control that vision, you become very frustrating to play up against uh, around, you know, even things like your own blue buff in the jungle. Was Karia looking for another hook? Not going to happen this time, yeah. Just going to accept that handshake and move on. Faker. Another team. St still doing this. He just hops back, not willing to get charmed. He knows that the trade is good enough. And he's starting to get a pretty significant CS advantage here as well, making moves like this as the wave crashes through, making it very difficult for Alone to actually get that money. Okay, Dimitri is on a ward on several, <laughs> I guess I should say. <laughs> so Karia is going to back off in respect. Yeah. And you can see that even though Team Ace was able to get a couple of uh, big kills in the beginning of the scheme, still uh, falling a little bit behind on the golds. I think that Lonely 
is in a fantastic spot though, so they still have ways to come back in this one, but they're trying to engage onto Straight as the handshake gets Guma a bit far away. He's not able to follow up onto that one, and Straight will survive. Yeah, Straight very low on health here, but does survive as you mentioned, and Karia is not finding, you know, repeated successes just yet. The snowball hasn't fully started rolling. Yes, okay, here we go, okay. top side again, Lonely. Yeah, Needle's already coming out, and a lot of them actually missing. I think only the first one actually hit him. As owner, they should know he's here. He did just clear out a ward as he's trying to get on in there and at least push Lonely away, but he is going for the kill. The knockup comes in, and they're gonna hand it over to Zeus as well. Excellently done by the top and jungle duo from T1 is now alone. He has just not been having fun in this game against Faker, man. This has not been good for him. The Spear Rush over the wall, though. They're looking for the charm onto the Wukong, but that is not the correct one. Nope, sadly not. But what's so significant about Zayas picking up this kill to stabilize here is it's at a timing where Lonely, of course, has no teleport, can't go back to lane. He ends up picking up a nice CS advantage here. And this means that Inside lanes later on, with this composition of T1 are running, they have a LeBlanc, they have a Wukong. Gangplank will not be able to side lane as safely or as deeply as a Gwen, who has really insane resistances, will be able to. Sure, her lifesteal, she's so impactful in even 1v3 attempts where people are trying to kill her. She survives her song, rotations can come through. So it was really important for Ace to try to shut this Gwen down early, and they were pretty successful until this follow-up gank hits. Now it's a CS advantage. So Zayas is going to have such a massive impact, not in necessarily the same way as you would if you were a fed Gwen, but later on in the game, he's so much safer. So you really just want to like delete the Gwen by making sure he does not get to play of the game. This kill is just back to relevance. It's almost like the, the last two kills didn't matter. Yeah. And that's part of the reason why I think Gwen is uh, really strong in this meta. And just the fact that now teams are like, oh, by the way, you can flex her. It's like, uh-oh, <laughs> we're going to be seeing a lot more of this champion. She just has so many things in her kit, as you've just very finely gone over Wolf, that make her a really strong champion from ahead or behind. So we'll see how Zeus does play it out from here. T1 is a team. They are going to secure this Rift Herald. Doesn't look like... A's are going to try to come on in here, but that's going to be the chain into the hook. And guess who's here? It's Guma, you see, from downtown. That is going to be Karia that does pick up the kill. Meanwhile, Owner just casually getting the referral. Now, A's do come over here and take the solo uh, Mountain Drake. That is going to go over to them. They we're not insanely quick on this rotation over, but they are able to get something cross-map for this. It's not like T1 got every single part of the map. And that one solo Mountain Drake, the resistances it's going to give you are significant, but T1 are the best team in the world, I would argue, you know, at taking a Rift Herald and turning it into a massive cool beat. Now, they're already in this game over 3,000 gold ahead, but that is going to balloon with the Rift Herald drop. So Dimitri is coming up here, but can he get here in time? So far, the 2v1, there is way more than enough damage as Zoner this time will collect the kill. And Dimitri's here, but... Uh, you know, I don't know if this is a good idea, especially with Ignite coming on up. He's just going to soak some of this XP and not be able to get there on time to help out too much, as we do have the MasterCard Mythic. It's is the, the Prowler's Claw. Yep. <laughs> Carry a buy here. Casually. You know, yeah. Casually getting the first one. Prowler's Claw is, is the item we went for, actually, in fact, last time uh, against TFM. Mm -hmm. Didn't go for Umbral Glaive first. So just sticking with this idea, just wants the extra damage and the ability to execute targets faster rather than the vision control, because he has already got that, right? I mean, look at the vision control here on the bottom side. He's sweeping, deep wards going up. But, you know, the Rift Herald wasn't dropped. We'll see where that ends up going. It looks like very likely he was going to drop it top side there so that Lonely didn't have a turret, but actually is moving his attention now to bottom side instead. They're looking to set up a dive with that vision that carry removed. Control ward here in the river, control ward in the tri brush just behind that turret. And they know that Dimitri is nowhere nearby, so they look to try to set up a gank, they look to try to punish, but too much respect here for the bottom doer for A's, and straight will just go over here and clear this ward. Yeah, nicely done. There is uh, one more behind them, but of course, uh, with the teleport change uh, a while back now, <laughs> he's actually going to miss it with the sweeper, which is pretty unfortunate for straight. But again, it's not going to amount too much unless it does survive up until 14 minutes and someone actually teleports onto that. Uh, otherwise, you can just use that to see where Dimitri is, as they are going to see where he is, in fact, as Owner is going to set it up. And there he is going to be killed over the wall as Karia is uh, pulled on in for quite a while there, but he's able to just 
Salter's way out afterwards as well. Another and kill here for T1. It's just these wards. It's the vision that T1 have around this area. They had the... Oh, I guess we're going to have to fight up here. They're going in again. The needles have started coming out, and all of them are going to hit this time. Another hook on the bottom side is now straight is going to potentially go down. He berserks Gumiusi and actually is nearly able to get the takedown, just barely not on time, though. As Karia continuing on in, of course he has owner here. His owner has been all over the map, but yeah, just a one for one at the end of the day in the bottom lane. Such a squishy composition here for A's too, that all these items coming through for Karia this early makes it so deadly, the pike. Also, the commitment here to try to trade one for one for A's leads to extra plates going over to the top side of the map here. Hmm. Nice clone. Okay, Cannon Barrage even committed to. They've got a loaned over the wall, and that might just be enough as he's trying to dodge in here. He's able to hop onto the chickens, and that will be enough. And now he's got his old team here. Karia in position. Nice little kick comes in as they're trying to give the kill to Faker. Takes him a little while, but he does pick up the kill. And now T1, they are 8,000 gold ahead. Yeah, it's it, it just happens so suddenly in these T1 games, right? And you get a lead from the objectives you take when you get a single kill. The plate gold on top of everything else. Now you're starting to put the pressure on A's. The wave manipulation on the bottom lane is why these ganks are so successful. You have wave manipulation plus ward control. And then suddenly, five can straight away, like, I can't farm. Dimitri, please come help. Dimitri comes over. He's spotted on wards. He's taken out by owner. And they just collapse in time after time after time. It's so oppressive the way this team plays. So you force resources down to the bottom side of the map. Now, Gwen suddenly was behind earlier. OK, 40 CS up casually, 2-2-1 two, two, and one after an 0-2 start because you've pulled so many racers on the round. You're, ma you're forcing cannon barrages in skirmishes because you're so desperate to try to get anything back, just one piece. But look at the wards on the minimap. It's just insane. Guma is just going to kill the turret and then maybe kill alone, but that's a term that comes in. He's got his ult still. The W is going to go wide, but it does not matter. Casually down a level. Gumi, you see, All he's by just got enough. Keep in mind, alone doesn't even have his first mythic. He's so far behind. I mean, the, the early game for him has been the most dire after Baker has had his way. And now, Dimitri is at least able to trade it back. Some turret shots. <laughs> I mean, owner is on the chase, but he will be able to okay. pop away. And as we zoom out, <laughs> we have a little bit of trouble here as the kick comes in. And Dimitri is in a lot of trouble. Baker is also on the run, but the Berserk is actually getting some nice value down, but not quite enough as straight also will be handed over to Karia and all that gold will go to the entire team. Everybody's getting a cut uh, of this massive lead here for T1, and that is going to be somewhat reflected in the now 11,000 gold lead that T1 are holding here at 15. <laughs> and they're not done. Just gonna use the reset here to get a little bit of damage on. Yeah, denies the back and... Forces an ult. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But unfortunate for Team A's, I mean, I, I, I like how they started it out, at least, you know, a couple kills. And I, I like that it seemed like they were pretty, playing pretty fast, loose, and at least relaxed uh, to start off this game. But at the end of the day, T1, I think, just the better team here. And they are looking to close this one out. They have uh, not picked up any Drakes, which is very T1-esque. Uh, we've seen this actually many times happen in the LCK as well. They'll just, you know, be... Even if it's a little bit less, even if it's like 5,000, 6,000 gold ahead, they just somehow don't have any dragons at 16 minutes as well, as well, they finally get one. They like to put the focus on dominating and killing mm. uh, structures and also solo lanes, especially the top side of the map. You get a Rift Herald, I mean, this is just tragic. Like, Gumiusi has to kill the turret first, by the way. He has to take three autos on a turret, then alone isn't able to charm. He presses his ult, gets the shield, has enough damage. He has a Gale Force for the extra damage as well. Whereas, as you mentioned, it was sitting on the last chapter there on the Ari. Skumiusi will die for this, but the trades come through. But the focus is always on top side. The focus is on trying to get turrets, trying to push out plates. And the dragon isn't going to give you that same level of snowball, just one single mountain drake. So when you know your opponent is focusing on the dragon, you're getting something else. Whereas this is just a highlight reel of Karia. And that's all of that uh, cut gold coming through as well from his passive. He's now got an Umbral Glaive. Like, we are 17 minutes of the game. The support has a Prowler's Claw and an Umbral Glaive, which is going to remove vision. And here he is. There he goes. <laughs> Where is he going? <laughs> As uh, he might have gone a little bit too.
too far this time. Dimitri says, thank you for the shutdown. And it will be traded back. Faker, he wants to, uh, you know, redeem his teammate, I suppose. But not really able to pick up too much as Zeus is behind Lonely on the second turret in the bottom lane. The needle's not quite going to land, and so he will survive. I think it's time, I think it's time, Beldis, to start having the conversation about Karia and being one of the greatest Korean supports that has ever played the game. And yes, he hasn't picked up as many titles as SKT Wolf, you know, nor has he made the meta-changing impacts of, you know, players like Mata in the past. But I have to say, I mean, how he's performing in this international event, how well he performed on DRX, actually as far back as 2020, it's time to put this guy in, this co in the conversation, really. And if he's able to pick up another title here at MSI after winning LCK, <laughs> just needs to be discussed. Now, this may not be the best time to mention this, but... <laughs> I was going to say, like, I, I agree with you, Wolf, but uh, maybe, maybe, maybe not the time. in like one or two minutes we can talk about that, because we're just going into the replay where he dies. <laughs> Um, but I mean, seriously though, like this is a player who, who stands with the greats, who stands with the legends uh, of the LCK and of Korean support history. The first player to ever pick up an MVP award uh, as a support in the LCK, he was able to do so in spring season. That means a lot. It's it's just, I don't know if it'll ever happen again, by the way. <laughs> I mean, yeah. the first and last support to ever win MVP. It might be him again. You yeah. Know? <laughs> I, I think, yeah. Uh, the thing about him is that I've I've definitely been a Carrier fan for, you know, two, three years now uh, since he started playing. But, you know, maybe some titles, maybe some more titles, and then uh, perhaps go from there. But, uh, yeah, we will have to see how far this guy can go. I, you know, I think we need to see past the MSI group stage as well to, to see where he's at on an international level. As he is uh, going in once again, he, he loves just having fun on this pike. Yeah, and I mean, because he has an escape, he can threaten a kill and then just get out if it doesn't look good. He's over the wall, you know. This is the side laning I was talking about for Zayas. Gangplank cannot compete, nor can he side lane on the opposite side of the map because he will be killed by this composition that T1 are running. So he kind of just has to sit back and fall 70 CS behind because that's all he could do. He is a cannon barrage bot right now. He's going to be able to add a global slow to a team fight, but not much else. If this game goes 20 more minutes, which I think is very unlikely, maybe he'll be relevant then. But for the most part, he is just a minion vacuum there on the bottom side of the map. Not going to make any impact this game. Just so far behind. Flash comes down, and that's going to get alone to Dimitri into not the best spot. Everfrost not really going to help out either. Owner still has his stopwatch. We'll use that for now as uh, he is smacking him with his big wallet. As we speak, Carrier looking for a bit more. Doesn't look like he was able to get the reset on that ultimate. As Faker says, don't worry, Carrier, I will chase him away for you. And now we're, we're 20 minutes into the game. T1 are going to take this inhibitor. I think we knew this was going to be a one-sided affair, but they may have outside, outdone themselves from the first time they faced up against Team Ace. C1 just, again, just looking to solidify that they are one of the best teams here. Yeah, we really just didn't think it was possible, did we, to outdo yeah. the first one? Something else, too, when we talk about what teams will prepare for in the Rumble stage for T1 and how they will prepare for what they're doing uh, come knockouts if they make it that far, you can't study these games. You can't study these drafts. That's not what they're going to play in the harder parts of this tournament. Probably. Maybe they do, but <laughs> I mean, this is why T1 plays this style when they know they are massive favorites, because you learn nothing if you hit this team in Rumble stage. You have gained no knowledge. I think that's very true as well of, of G2 and RNG, these three top teams that are yeah. likely to go undefeated. T1, the only one left not to do so yet, is that it's just flashy and it feels disrespectful, but I mean, it's also a good strategy to actually just play these yeah, champions and, and, and blind Gwen and not care, and then be like, I'm 16,000 gold up in front of the Korean crowd. Yep, yeah, they're, they're just enjoying their time right now as, uh-oh, Team Ace, they decide, well, we'll make our stands here on the Baron. But at the end of the day, T1 will be able to push this Red Bull Baron power play into the base you would have to imagine. Yeah, it might be small because there's not much left on the map to get. <laughs> Yeah, they, uh... <laughs> There's only two turrets left, Valdez! <laughs> Carry is gonna look to make more happen, as uh, he is gonna be in the front here. Look at the Prowler's Claw, he's gonna pick up 5-Kid, end the kill, and then go into his own good old stopwatch there. And Spaker's going for more, will they kill Lonely is the only question, as the answer will be no, but the Nexus will go down anyway. T1 will 
continue on the End of the day, 